I'm David Skidmore, and we're talking about how to make music with four mallets. So let's talk about independence. We talk about independence a lot when we're playing drum set, because when you're playing drum set, you might be playing different rhythms simultaneously in your right hand, left hand, right foot, and left foot. In marimba playing, when we're talking about independence, we're almost always talking about dynamics independence. So in other words, different dynamics happening in different hands at the same time. And this is how we can create a really great melody in our right hand while our left hand is playing something that's more background or accompaniment. Or vice versa, maybe the left hand's playing this awesome melody and the right hand at that moment is just the background. So check out the exercises in your book. In these exercises, both hands are playing double vertical strokes in unison at the interval of a perfect fifth. So all of that should feel super comfortable to you at this point. We're only adding one new idea, which is that in one hand, the dynamics stay steady the whole time, while in the other hand, the dynamics are changing. How do we do this? Stick heights. Remember we talked about in an earlier lesson that with almost all percussion instruments, stick heights equal dynamics. So if you want your dynamics to stay the same in one hand and you want your dynamics to simultaneously change in another hand, all you have to do is use the correct stick heights to make that happen. Once again, I'm going to set the metronome at the slowest tempo in my tempo range, quarter equals 80. And let's give this a try. We get a chance to try some of the independence required in the etude in the phrasing exercises, which we're going to talk about now. The phrasing exercise in this lesson takes three measures out of the etude, which have a particularly repetitive left hand. The number one mallet, which is your outside mallet in your left hand, just plays the same pitch this whole time. And in fact, two measures of this exercise are just that repetitive note played over and over again. This is a perfect opportunity to add some subtle changes in how loud or quiet each note is so that the passage really comes to life. I give you a couple of suggestions of how you might phrase both the left hand and the right hand in this exercise, so be sure to try both. Now I'm going to play the whole etude for you, and I want you to really listen for all of the different moments that I find to create phrases by subtly changing how loud or quiet each note is. And while it's totally cool for you to copy me, for starters, I'd really love it if eventually you're finding your own way that you'd like to phrase each moment of this piece. One thing I almost forgot to mention is accents. You'll see a couple of accents in this etude. So while I bet a lot of you have seen accents before in other pieces of music, I wanted to take just a second to talk about them. Most of you probably think of an accent as a note that's louder than all the other notes around it. And that's basically true. But I wanted to try thinking about accents in a slightly different way. Accents are essentially a note that is emphasized. Think about the way that you would speak if you wanted to emphasize something. You would give something a little bit more weight in the way that I'm doing right now when I'm talking. That's what an accent is, really. It's a note that sounds different than all the other notes around it, and it's called out by that little accent mark. So as we're playing this etude, focus on those accents, listen to how I do it when I play the etude, and then try it on your own. 